Hey everyone, let's talk a little bit more about MCB because I actually believe that this is going to completely transform how we interact on the internet. And there are some really impressive MCB servers being released right now that I think uh, you should be aware of. So very quickly, why are we even talking about this? What's going on right now? Why is this so revolutionary? Well, it's because uh, as a user these days, you are going to be sitting inside some kind of AI type of application. Right? So maybe you use Cloud Desktop or ChatGPT or so similar app like that and if you're a developer then you know that we also have these types of agents these days right so here in visual studio code i have github copilot it's very popular and it's for a good reason because it can do a lot of things on our behalf so previously if you wanted uh, to look up some information for example what is the cheapest item they have in this store on this website here previously i as a user i would have to go to the website i would have to look it up and it would be a lot of hassle but what's going to happen i think is that people are going to stay inside their own agent type of application and they're simply going to ask right, their agent what is the least expensive option on some website and so in my agent app i'm just going to hand off this task to my agent i don't manually want to go to this website it's too much work right it sounds very lazy but this is simply what people are going to do i think my agent will receive this query and then it's up to my agent to actually go to that website, perhaps find some answer. Right? It's just it's just a more comfortable user experience. So my agent could go to this uh, store on my behalf and it could uh, look up it could look up the information here. Right. So I think what's going to happen is people will sit inside their agent type of applications and they're going to just ask a bunch of questions and these agents are going to reach out to these services on the internet to get an answer. Now, if you're building a type of agent that needs to do that, you have probably noticed that it's very hard to go to programmatically browse around the internet because a lot of websites these days, a lot of servers these days, they have protections in place against bots. There are actually pretty sophisticated protections in place because these websites, they know what you're doing. When you go to an e-commerce website or a travel website or some other uh, website, they can pick up on the fact that you're scraping them or you're programmatically interacting with their website. So if you're building some kind of agent that needs to reach out to other websites on the internet on behalf of the user, you probably don't wanna go directly to the e-commerce store yourself. You wanna proxy it through a service that can get around those restrictions, that can get you unblocked. So I actually wanna introduce you to today's sponsor, which is Bright Data. They have actually released an amazing MCP server that helps you do that, right? So you can find a link in the description to check it out for yourself. But in that case, I'm not going to go directly to the e-commerce store myself. I'm gonna use Bright Data's MCP server, and then Bright Data will go to the e-commerce store, right? Or travel site, or maybe some search. And this is gonna be a more robust solution because with Bright Data, we can get unblocked. So in this video, I wanna show you how to set up an MCP server like that, both as a user, but also programmatically. So if we're building, for example, a JavaScript AI agent, how can we programmatically hook into an MCP server like that as well? So with this MCP server, we can access the latest information on the internet. Sometimes these services, they are restricting you based on geographical location. Okay, but Bright Data can help you with that as well. If the website has some protection in place, they have the web unlocker here. Optionally, we can also do some browser related features and it works with MCP compatible AI assistance. So let's actually try that out and see how that would work. So you probably have already seen how to set it up in cloud desktop. It's probably one of the most popular options right now. The other very popular option is GitHub Copilot, especially if you're a developer. Uh, regardless of the two options that you're gonna use, the setup will look very similar. So let me actually show you how to do it in GitHub Copilot actually, because this is growing super fast. So when I have a query for GitHub Copilot like this, I want it actually to use the Bright Data MCP server, right? So how can I do that? So the way it works with these MCP servers is that they contribute tools. So for example, an MCP server might contribute a tool scraping a website in markdown format. So then when a user has a query like this, the LLM can decide to invoke that tool to accomplish the task. How can you see the tools that are available? Well, here in GitHub Copilot, but it's gonna be very similar in Cloud Desktop, you will see some option to see the MCP servers or uh, tools that are contributed by those MCP servers. So you can see I have some, there are some built-in ones, but there are also some extensions I have here that also contribute tools. And now I wanna add the tools from Bright Data's MCP server as well. I can go to the bottom here and add more tools. I'm gonna add an MCP server. And this is actually 
an npm package so we just need to give it the name of the package so if i go to the tool here package name is at bright data forward slash mcp so if i just add that right here and press enter um, do we want to install that yes i will allow it i will give it a server id of simply bright data where do I want to have it available? Well, let's ju let's just say in this workspace. All right, so then it's actually going to open up an mcp.json uh, file in VS Code here, and we'll try to run this MCP server. However, we are getting an error when we do that. So if I try to start server, you will see that we actually get an error here, and this is as expected because we should supply it with the API token that we have from Bright Data. These other options are optional, so let me actually remove these two, and we may actually also want to have a rate limit. So we may want to have maybe 100 per hour. So we're not going crazy with the request. So you can sign up for a Bright Data account. And then here in the dashboard under account settings, I can create an API key. Okay, so I already did that. I can't show it here because it's secret. Don't show it to anyone else. And once you have one, you can copy it and paste it right here. So let me actually do that. All right, so I just added the API key and I closed the file because I can't show my API key. But now if I click here and try to run the server again, if I click on start server, you can see the error goes away and it actually discovered 49 tools so now i can click on this again and we can see that if i scroll down a little bit you can see now we have a new mcp server called bright data that is contributing a bunch of tools so very quickly what are some here well extract so this is a tool that can scrape a web page and return uh, like json data we can scrape something as html as markdown so now there are a bunch of tools contributed here by Bright Data. Now in agent mode, if I have a question like what is the cheapest pillow on some e-commerce store, I can hand off this task to my agent. My agent is going to check if it should use some tool. If it decides to use the Bright Data tool, it will invoke it. And let's actually just see what we get. And uh, it, it should help. It should help us get around restrictions and so on because Bright Data is uh, is really good at that. Okay, so here it says, I'll help you find the cheapest pillow. Okay, so here it decided to run a tool, right? It's called the Scrape as Markdown tool contributed by this MCP server. There is a description about it. Now a tool you can imagine is like a function. And so a function can have input. So this tool has one input. It needs to know which URL to scrape, right? So here you can see, an and it's the LLM, the agent also needs to decide the value for that input. So here you can see the agent has decided to give it an input of URL and then website that we want to scrape. Now here in GitHub Copilot, it wants me to confirm to actually invoke the tool before it will actually do it. So I will actually just click continue, yes. And then actually the tool invocation here completed. So it went ahead and passed the URL as the input here, and then it got an output from that tool. So that tool showed that there are 15 results, okay? And then here it says extract. So this is another tool. It has decided to invoke another tool. And let's actually see. So it also needs to pass an input and I need to allow it here. Although I could also always allow it. So that's something you can do in Copilot. In co I will. All right, so now it has completed the second uh, tool here, extract, the extract tool. So it has passed this as the input and as the output, it got a well list of JSON data here, essentially about the product and then it is able to synthesize a final answer to me as the user and it found out and it found that the cheapest option is a $25 pillow, right? It can even rank them. These LLMs, they really like this type of uh, structured data that it got from, the, from Bright Data actually, right? And if I have another question, let's actually clear the context here. If I ask, can you give me the latest course name that ByteGrad offers on ByteGrad.com, right? So let's actually see if it can do that. So typically when you go around scraping websites like that with an agent, perhaps you're going to get blocked pretty easily. So it's very powerful that you can combine that unlocking ability that Bright Data offers with an AI agent. Okay, so here it wants to scrape, it wants to scrape the website as markdown. That's the tool that it wants to use. I allow I, I allow that. And actually sometimes it wants to do another one. So sure, let's uh, do it again. Let's uh, sure, go ahead. And it found some, it scraped uh, some other page actually, the slash courses page. It got output here from Bright Data, right? So the output of the tool is coming from Bright Data in this case. It's handed off to the LLM here, which is the Cloud Sonnet 4 model. And then based on that output from Bright Data, the LLM is able to synthesize a final answer here. So it actually got it right. This is indeed the latest offer. All right, so previously here, I'm the user. I'm handing off this task to the agent. 
the agent will then manage everything else. Now let's actually try building an AI agent ourselves in JavaScript. And we will see how we can programmatically uh, hook into an MCP server and get a similar great result. All right, so I will use some packages here. There are some tools that help you basically orchestrate this type of workflow a little bit easier. So you don't have to use it, but I like using Langchain. And it has an MCP adapters option here with the with a client so we can actually connect to that MCP server. I'm going to use Anthropic here as the LLM. And with this, we can orchestrate the agent a little bit easier. Now, I did add two environment variables here to my setup here. I can't show you that because those are secrets. So the first one is the API token from uh, Bright Data that I showed you from the dashboard. And the other one is actually an API key from Anthropic. So I can actually use their LLM. I'm actually going to load it here with .env into this process here. And then here we will have the main function that we're going to run. Um, I'm going to run it at the bottom of the file here. And then here we're going to have the meat of it, right? The, the most important logic. So the first thing I want to do is start and try to connect to that MCP server. So I have the client here. And here I need to specify which MCP server. So it's going to be Bright Data over standard IO. I can start this server with mpx at Bright Data forward slash MCP. And I need to pass in the API token. This is the Bright Data token. Okay, so then I have the client here. And hopefully it's now connected to that MCP server. So what does an MCP server give us? Well, it gives us a couple of things, but I would say tools are the most important one. We can already try to use get tools to see if we can actually discover those tools. And I'm just going to log it for now. So let's actually try running this and see uh, what we get. So I opened up my terminal. Let's actually run this file. We'll say node AI agent.js and let's see what we get. And actually already we get a bunch of tools name uh, and actually already we get a bunch of tool names here. So you can see there are, uh, well, MCP bright data scrape as markdown that we saw before, as well as uh, extract actually we can also uh, scrape as raw html and there are a bunch of other tools as well but that proves that we can now programmatically discover the tools that are available on mcp server i think that's pretty cool it's not only available for us as users right and now our application our agent has access to those tools so now actually we can make it very uh, powerful now let's say what we want to allow the user to do is they just should be able to chat an LLM. And so when they have a query, like what we had before, like uh, what's the cheapest item on some store, that now we can use those tools. So we need an LLM as well as tools. So I'm going to use Anthropic here for the LLM. I have Claude 3, 7 Sonnet, but it works with other models as well. And this is the LLM. So the LLM will need to decide if and which tools to invoke. So I'm going to use the agent here from Langchain. So it will it'll basically help us orchestrate this agent type of application. And basically an agent can be done with an LLM. So that's this one. And then it needs to know which tools to invoke. So these are the tools that we're adding here from uh, Bright Data. Now I could create a UI or something like that, but let's actually stick to the terminal here. To make it look better, I'm gonna use uh, another tool here and I will also log that the MCP agent is ready. So we wanna have like a conversation in a terminal for now. And this is often done with some kind of loop. So we will have some uh, marker here at the beginning and we're, go we're going to continuously get the input from the user. We will also be able to, ex to exit it. But if the user sends a message, we're going to use agent.invoke. We're going to pass along what the user wrote as content here. And I'm going to pretty print it. I created another function there just to format it a bit nicely. And we're going to loop over that. So let's actually try this out now. I will actually, I will say note AI agent.js. All right, so here we see starting server and now the bright data MCP agent is also ready. Now here we can chat with the LLM and it should be able to invoke tools. Uh, what is the most expensive pillow on some websites, on some e-commerce websites, right? Let's actually try this. I'm gonna say press enter here and let's see what happens. All right, so actually it can, we can see uh, what the results are because I'm logging it. So here we can see that it has decided already to invoke one tool, the scrape as markdown tool, and it passed this as the input, okay, and it's finished. And then it's using the extract uh, tool here from Bright Data. So this is actually a little bit more sophisticated because it will actually uh, try to get the J 
the data in JSON format here with actually a prompt. So it actually also has decided to make, the, so it actually also has to decide on what prompt. So this is actually what we want, so that's good. We ha we do get an error here, but this doesn't seem to affect anything. Uh, so actually it's, fin right? so here it's still finished this tool. And then it actually decided to use the scrape as HTML tool as well. And you can see in one query, we can do a lot of requests, right? Because the agent really wants to try some things out to get most of the data. This is actually really interesting. So the website in this case is actually a uh, JavaScript rendered. So that's another challenge typically if you're going to scrape data. I've been using it and Bright Data here doesn't have any issue but scraping that. So that's also really nice. You can see actually it also discovered that this website is using an API. So it actually has found out the API that this website is using and it's actually trying to scrape that API endpoint directly, which is actually a more efficient way of scraping. So that's really nice as well. It will actually try to go to other pages as well. So pretty sophisticated scraping here. So it wants to get the answer right. So it will try a bunch of things. If you don't like that, uh, let me actually stop here because I don't want to burn through all my tokens, let's say. You may want to try to add some restrictions. Maybe you want to append something to the prompt that the user submits, maybe something like, do not invoke tools more than three times. And maybe you want to add some other safeguards to make sure, right? So typically I would add some more safeguards just to uh, make everything a little bit safer. Um, but just to show you how, how it would look like if we would, if we would have a slightly better prompt here, please give me the data of the items on the first page on this website, right? Something like that, which is a little bit more, um, which is a little bit more precise what exactly I'm looking for. You can also encourage the user to be precise with their prompts. And you can see it starts off uh, immediately. It's very fast, actually. It's using the extract uh, tool again. All right, and here I actually get a final answer from the LLM. I'm logging the I'm logging the raw output here so we can also see uh, the other things we may be interested in. All right, so here we see the output from the LLM. So uh, initially it was the first time trying to use the tool. You can see there's a type of tool use here. And it will also show you the tool name and the tool calls, including the tokens used. So we see a bunch of that. So basically as the LLM is invoking tools, that's what I'm logging here so we can see some relevant information. All right, so eventually the LLM got back with a final result and it said, great, I've retrieved the product data from the API. Here's the information. And it's giving all of the information that we asked for here. I could of course show this as a separate message here in the chat here, or if you're building a UI, this is what you would ultimately render in the UI, right? I can see how many tokens are used, et cetera. All right, so now with just a few lines of code and the Bright Data MCP server, we are building a pretty sophisticated AI agent here. So make sure to check out Bright Data's new MCP server. You can find a link in the description. Well done to the Bright Data team. I think this unlocks a lot of more advanced features for your AI agents. Thanks to Bright Data for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching. Hope this helps you out with building out your AI applications. Have a nice day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.